Welcome back to City Line. With me, I have uh, two individuals um, that make music and they make beautiful music. I'm talking about Symphony Tacoma. Please join me in welcoming Sarah Ionides. She is the musical director and maestro of Symphony Tacoma and a special guest, Mary Jensen. She is the principal flute, or I could say, I guess, flautist. And also thank you for agreeing to uh, play something for us as well. I know you didn't wake up this morning thinking, oh, I'm gonna give them a concert via Zoom, but these are ever-changing times that we're in. Isn't that right? Absolutely. All right. So, Sarah, um, I told you that I have been following you uh, on Instagram and just loving your precious family, uh, the birthdays that you invite people to be a part of when you're outside and your kids are playing around. And I think this is a beautiful time for Sarah as a mother uh, to enjoy this, but I'm dying to ask you, how is Symphony Tacoma Maestro faring during this pandemic? Well, thank you very much. This is um, definitely a wonderful time for me to be able to be with my family in a way that we have not been for the last 10 years with our crazy schedules and concert schedules. So that is really quite a luxury in some ways. The Symphony Tacoma side of things is such a shock to us all that we cannot get together, we cannot play together, we cannot have concerts right now. Um, it's really hard for everybody, um, but we're maintaining um, a really um, optimistic outlook for being able to stay in business, to be able to bring concerts back as soon as possible. We are redefining, re-evaluating, recreating on a, it seems almost daily basis with our staff and board. Many, many Zoom meetings, many chats about what should we do as the goalpost changes and, and moves and what would things look like in another way, digitally and differently, should they have to. So it's keeping us on our toes and everybody's doing fine and staff working from home. And we just truly miss our musicians. It's been fantastic to be able to see Mary and connect with some of our musicians on occasions like this. So thank you for this. Oh, my pleasure. And I, I, I've loved seeing uh, Karina also on Instagram and her orange cat. Um, I know from just, following the messages that you've been putting out that you've had to cancel or postpone some concerts. So Sarah, what is the outlook of these programs as of today? Well, good question. Um, as of today, we do need to look seriously at, um, of course, the rest of the season is not officially announced as canceled, but the likelihood of large social gatherings being able to take place even May, June is probably, it's getting more and more unlikely at the moment. Then we look further forward to how can we reschedule those concerts. Um, summer is not usually a time when Symphony Tacoma is operating. Um, so we look towards the next season. Um, we have plugged in options of creating combinations of concerts that we couldn't have with concerts that we plan to have, and also the following season. Should we not be able to start up in October, we then need another contingency plan, which we're working on right now, that should we have to move any other concerts, where would they go? What would they look like? What's a mobile concert look like if we can put it up quickly uh, when there's a, an availability even in the hall? Um, so that there are so many questions to be answered and to be thought through until we can say, okay, this is what we're doing as of today. As of today, we have no concerts in April. Um, that was last week. But what we can do and can assure people is that we are in touch regularly. We are looking for unique ways to communicate with our patrons. We're, our doors are still we're still in business. We, we haven't gone away. We're just biding our time and um, waiting to lift for the band to be lifted so that we can 
make music together. And in the meantime, we'll be unrolling some other creative ideas of which I think you you may be sharing one of them any moment now with, with, yeah. with our audience, the Facebook Lives. I didn't want to steal your thunder. But. That's okay. So Mary, um, I would love to have you play something for us. And then after you're done playing, I want to talk with you about how you've been spending your time as a musician, because we know what Sarah's been doing, but I want to hear about your time and what you've been doing. So Mary, please gift us with some beautiful music. We need it. <laughs> So, Miss Mary, what have you been doing with your time since all of this was put into place? Yeah, um, well, I've been spending a lot of time with my family and my students still. Um, I teach private flute lessons and I'm seeing all of my students online using Zoom. And so a little bit business as usual, but just in a different platform. And it's been really lovely to actually spend some extra time with my students. Um, I have quite a few students who've decided to take lessons twice a week during this time uh, for enrichment purposes. So I'm actually expanding to doing extra time with them on music theory. And um, some of them I've gotten started on some piano. And so it's, it's staying busy. Um, the other thing that I've been spending a lot of time doing is getting my vegetable garden going for the summer, which is one of my favorite things to do each year. Oh, I love that. So I, I'm hoping that when we are able to connect in person that maybe you'll throw some tomatoes my way. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so Mary, what did you perform for us? Yeah, I just played the the opening um, couple phrases from the Alamanda from Bach's Partita in A minor for flute alone. So one of the great works of Johann Sebastian Bach, um, who is my favorite composer, um, and not a composer that we hear in the symphonic world so much. Um, to to uh, the he was an early composer, kind of before the symphony was invented. So we don't hear a lot of him on the symphonic stage, but we get lots of Bach in chamber music and um, solo works like these. Oh, because there are many things that stand the test of time and Bach is one of them. Mary, you're scheduled as of, I'm gonna to say today because every day is just the day, uh, to be a guest artist for some of next year's concerts, actually next season's concerts, excuse me. Um, tell us a little bit about that because we wanna musically manifest that we're gonna be able to sit in the Pantages and say, hey, I saw her on Zoom. Well, I certainly hope that that will still be true. Um, I'm uh, scheduled to uh, perform a pair of uh, solo works with the orchestra next season. Um, one of the pieces is, um, by Mozart. Uh, it is an andante and rondo for flute and orchestra. Um, it was actually originally two separate pieces, one for flute and one for violin, but um, we all like to borrow from each other in the music world. And so they've been paired together as a, as a flute concerto. And then the other piece that we've been planning to present is a fantasy by Foray um, for flute and orchestra. Oh, quite. Oh. Fabulous, and, and we are going to cross our fingers, our eyes, and our toes that we get to sit into that, sit in the beautiful Pantages and just close our eyes and listen to this. Um, speaking of listening, Sarah, you have been hosting some live chats 
on Facebook. Um, tell us about who you've talked to and then who is coming up. Thank you. Well, we've had Mary on, on the program last week, who did it a, a week before last. Mary um, is our principal flute and, and joining us today. So she did a wonderful program and we talked about Debussy um, and other composers and little solos um, from the repertoire, as well as playing little excerpts of Symphony Tacoma. We've also had Sven Ronning, our concert master. We've had Jeffrey Bors and his wife, Amy. Um, I have done one of those. and. Most recently, we had David Ludwig and his wife, Bella Christova, who was the to be the violin soloist this last week. Um, upcoming, we have um, Judson Scott, who is the trumpet professor at PLU and, and also our associate uh, principal trumpeter from Symphony Tacoma this Saturday. And we're going to be viewing some of his um, interior, he, the land of dungeons, OK, <laughs> where he works from his studio, as well as hearing him in some new um, recordings that he's making right now. So I'm really excited about that. We'll also be talking about creative endeavors. And we're hoping that Charlie Albright um, is going to join us when he would have been taking the stage with Pantages Theatre in, in May for that concert, assuming we can't have that concert. Yes. Oh, my gosh. You... Uh, Sarah, have not been resting on your laurels, as my grandmother would have said. Um, Sarah, do you need to have a Facebook account to watch these interviews? No, you don't. You don't need Facebook um, to watch them. You can watch them after the fact on YouTube, and those um, are being collected together in a, a blog of Symphony Tacoma's website. So if you go to symphonytacoma.org, and you go to our blog page, you can watch every one of those. Um, and it's quite fun because you, even if you don't have Facebook, you can watch people as they comment and as they respond um, to, to that um, lovely interaction process. And that's what's quite fun about this. If you do have Facebook is, it's almost like a, a backstage uh, corridor chat, you meet people, you can comment on each other, people's comments, and it, it becomes very interactive and live and fun, and you can respond to what's happening at the moment, as well as ask questions of the guests. And sure. myself. So while they are on you, the Symphony Tacoma website, I'm going to encourage them to look around and to uh, open bathroom cabinets and see what's in there, and also to uh, answer or to answer the call of this question I'm going to ask you Sarah and that is what does Symphony Tacoma need right now from their audience? Well first of all we need everybody to stay well and healthy yeah. <laughs> so take care of yourself keep in touch with us we want to hear from you we we're using platforms like Instagram and Facebook and social media of course um, of course, the greatest need is that Symphony Tacoma, like many, many other businesses, is reliant and dependent upon the generosity and the income um, of our community, um, as well as grants and corporations. And as we watch to see how the economy will be impacted by COVID-19, we have to um, look at our every gift and donation is even more treasured and golden than ever before so that we can bring our musicians back we can have people continue to be inspired to be practicing so that we can hire them for special services for digital reasons and we can really look outside of the box and keep everybody going because i think culture art music is such an important inspiration for survival for the human race. So we've just got to keep doing it and it becomes really important as well as so many other things that are important, but it will help us it uplift our spirits. So we're very grateful if anybody's able to make any kind of donation to Symphony Tacoma through our website right now, we truly appreciate it. I wanna say thank you to both of you, Sarah and Mary, for taking time out of your uncertain and busy schedule as of today uh, to spend time with me and to fill my soul up 
and to continue to um, show us how music heals. And I can't wait to have both of you on the comfy couch with big hugs and lots more music. Thank you so much. We just love being back with you, even if it's uh, not quite in person, but this opportunity to play together, um, hear Mary, and talk to you about the value of, of what we do. It's so much appreciated. We hope to see you in person soon. We have much more to come on City Line. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back. Don't go away.